So the service of black soldiers gets a lot of attention in the press in 1863 and 1864, and um, they're praised by northern newspapers considerably, and um, it does a lot to break down prejudice against African Americans. Now, having said all that, it is also equally true that the treatment of African Americans in the Army was anything but equitable. At first, they were primarily used as labor troops, not as combat troops. There was a reluctance on the part of many commanders to actually put them into battle. So you use them to do other jobs which could free white soldiers for combat. Then on other occasions, some people claim, they were used as what they call cannon fodder. That is, they would be used to attack impossible positions where just, you know, where you had to do something but put the black soldiers up there if, it's, if a lot of people are going to get killed. There were complaints then uh, also. More globally, they served in segregated units. Okay, these were black units. There were no integrated, racially integrated units in the U.S. Army, in the Civil War, in the Spanish-American War, in World War I, in World War II. These were segregated units all the way through under white officers. Oh, here's a picture of the officers of a black unit, but you see they're all white. Blacks could not become commissioned officers until the very, very end of the war when a few were promoted, mostly chaplains. There were like 100 black officers, most of them were chaplains, which is an officer, but not what we're talking about. They could become sergeants, non-commissioned officers, but that was it. They were under white officers, not all of whom were like Thomas Wentworth Higginson. Some white officers felt that being assigned to um, command black soldiers was, uh, was insulting. They, they, it wasn't the way to get ahead in the army to command black soldiers, and many of them treated them rather abusively. Um, there was also the very galling issue of unequal pay. When blacks were, the, the law of Congress that authorized the president to use African Americans was written at a time when they assumed they'd mostly be as support troops. So black soldiers were, the, 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 the pay for a white soldier was $13 a month, plus $3 what they call clothing allowance to get a uniform. Black soldiers were paid $10 a month with no allowance. So it's $16 versus $10, not insignificant. Um, the 54th Massachusetts refused their pay for months and months and months, even though this was a hardship to their families. They refused their pay until saying the federal government has to pay us the same as other soldiers. The legislature of Massachusetts appropriated money to make up the difference for the 54th Massachusetts. They refused that also. They said, we want to be paid the same way as all other soldiers. Um, their document, we don't have readings this week, but next week in the Janap book, there's some documents about this fight over equal pay. In 1864, Congress finally passed a law that henceforth they would get equal pay. Um, but even that wasn't sufficient because they wanted equal pay retroactively to the beginning of their service. In, in March 1865, Right at the end of the war, Congress finally passed a retroactive equal pay law for black soldiers. So it took two years, but this campaign was successful. And probably, I can't prove this exactly, the, probably this is the first national law in American history premised on equal treatment of black and white in any capacity, the equal pay law. And it came out of this protest by the 54th and other uh, black uh, units. Then there was the terrible problem of the treatment of black soldiers by the Confederacy. Some Confederate commanders just refused to take black prisoners. In other words, and of course the most notorious example of this, which I mentioned a while ago, was the Fort Pillow massacre in Tennessee in 1864, where a small outpost garrisoned by black soldiers was overrun by Confederate troops under the command of Nathan Bedford Forrest. You may remember I mentioned that controversy in Florida about a school where they're changing the name of the school from Nathan Bedford Forrest School, and there's a controversy about that. But Forrest, uh, as I said, 
Over 100 black soldiers seem to have been massacred after they surrendered, which is a serious violation of the laws of war, in the Fort Pillow Massacre. Now, as I say, the Confederacy passed a law that any African-American soldier captured would not be treated as a prisoner of war, would be put to hard labor if free or sold back, put back into slavery if they had been a slave. They'd be treated as a fugitive slave, which was a serious crime in the South. In other words, as a criminal, not a, um, not a, uh, a, a prisoner of war. And in fact, this question of the treatment of black soldiers was the occasion for the first meeting of Frederick Douglass and Lincoln in July 1863. Um, Douglass came to the White House to complain to Lincoln about two things. One, equal pay for black soldiers. And to that, Lincoln said, look, Douglass, uh, you know, give me a break here. Um, We've had so much opposition to black soldiers. Uh, there's a lot of whites who don't want them in the army. This will come, he said, but give it time. It will come. Now, that was enough of Douglas. It's not fair, etc. On the question of the treatment of black soldiers, Lincoln said, absolutely, they must be treated as soldiers like anyone else. We cannot allow, no army can allow part of their army to be treated differently by the enemy than another part of their army. You can't have an army like that. And Lincoln said, you know, I don't really know about this. I'm going to issue an order. I'm going to issue an order that for every black soldier executed at, by the Confederacy as a slave rebel, one Confederate prisoner of war will be executed. Although he said, I don't know where that will stop. I really don't want to do that. We don't want to, but nonetheless, we cannot allow them to do that. And secondly, um, for every prisoner of war put to hard labor, either as a slave or a free, a Confederate POW will be put to hard labor by the North. Now, this never really happened. Despite the law, the Confederacy did treat captured black soldiers as prisoners of war. They did not sell them into slavery. Lincoln did not have to go into this business of retaliation. But the Confederacy refused to exchange black soldiers. There were prisoner of war exchanges in the first two years of the war where each person exchanged sort of took an oath not to go back in the army. Um, Confederacy refused to exchange black soldiers, whereupon Lincoln stopped the exchanges. So for the last two years of the war, there were no prisoner of war exchanges. Now, some people said, well, that's good for the North because the Confederacy has less manpower, so they, you know, but it was, Lincoln was under, a, you can imagine, a lot of pressure from the families of white prisoners of war in the South, white Union prisoners of war, to allow these exchanges. In other words, white prisoners of war in the South could not be exchanged because the Confederacy would not exchange black ones, but Lincoln stuck with that through the uh, entire war. 